One thing I'm sure of, we may not have to pray in heaven anymore, but we are still going to have to praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to give the Lord, amen, praise God, a voice of thanksgiving. I want to give him a heart of praise in the house. I want to acknowledge him, amen, hallelujah. He's still, amen, my Lord and my Savior. Praise God. Let's magnify the Lord in song. Let's worship Jesus, amen, who's worthy of all praise and adoration. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Can we just lift our hands in the house today? Hallelujah. Jesus, we worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He's worthy. An instrument to exalt and to extend Jesus' name globally as the waters cover the sea. Open our heavens, O oh Lord. Pour out your spirit, cover the earth with your glory. Cover the earth with your glory. Cover the earth with the sound. Of heaven, cover the earth with your glory. Cover the earth with your glory. Cover the earth with the sound of heaven. Cover the earth. Hallelujah! I want to be an instrument of honor today. Hallelujah! Let me speak. What you say, let the sound prepare the way. Kingdom come, globally, as the waters cover the sea. Open the heavens, O oh Lord. Pour out the Spirit, cover the earth with your glory. Cover the earth with your glory. Cover the earth with the sound. Of heaven, all of the earth is yours. All of the nations adore you. Cover the earth with the sound of heaven. Cover the earth. Hallelujah! He's worthy, and he's come to pour out his spirit this morning. If we'll just reach up. Hallelujah, begin to magnify him. Hallelujah. Open up the heavenly. Let a new sound be released. As the waters cover the sea, cover the earth. Open up the heavenly. Let a new sound be released. As the waters cover the sea, cover the earth, yeah. Open up the heavenly, let a new sound be released. As the waters cover the sea, cover the earth, hallelujah. Open up the heavenly, let a new sound be released. As the waters cover the sea, cover the earth, cover the earth, cover the earth, cover the earth with your glory, cover the earth with your glory, cover the earth with the sound of heaven. All of the nations adore you. Cover the earth with the sound of heaven. Cover the earth. Hallelujah, he's worthy. Oh, he's worthy. Open up the 
we just clap our hands this morning? I don't know about you, but I came to worship him. Oh, I came to praise him. Hallelujah. He's been so good to me. Oh, hallelujah. There's nobody like my God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
do what I can to rejoice. I didn't just come to beg, I didn't come to cry, I came to rejoice. Because I serve an almighty God. Hallelujah. Come bless the Lord, come bless the Lord. Draw near to worship Christ the Lord. And bless his name, his holy name, declaring his good. Come bless the Lord, come bless the Lord. Draw near to worship Christ the Lord, and bless His name, His holy name, declaring His good. Oh, that men would praise Him. Oh, that men would praise Him. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, again I say, rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, draw near to worship Christ the Lord, and bless His name, His holy name, declaring He is good. Oh, that men would praise Him, oh, that men would praise Him. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, again I say, a shout in the house. Amen. Praise God. Why be a whiner? Why be a complainer when you can shout the blessings of God down? I am totally in love with Jesus. 
Amen. Praise God. I said I love him enough to obey him. I'm not struggling, amen, praise God, with obeying the word of the Lord. I didn't say I understood everything, praise God, amen. I don't know everything. But one thing I do know, that God is worthy to be praised. Excuse me for just a moment, praise the Lord, amen, hallelujah. He is a God, a man that can handle whatever you're facing. God has already given us this day. We ought to, might, might as well just go ahead and praise God. Let our hair down. Just go ahead and shake off the shackles. Start worshiping and praising the Lord. Hallelujah. Why be a doubter? Praise God. Amen. When you can worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Why stay the same you are when you came when God has already devised a means amen to change you now I realize praise God amen that in this place amen there's a lot of antics there's a lot of people amen that uh, you know get excited some people will run the aisles some will dance before the Lord some praise God amen they just let their tonsils amen hang out praise God hallelujah but I'm here to tell you praise the Lord if you knew what I knew if you had what I had if you knew where I came from if you knew what I used to be praise God I'm here to tell you you would be shouting and praising God for the change and the revelations that God has given us and blessed us with today I do not believe praise God amen that we have received everything we're going to get I believe the Holy Ghost, according to the Bible, is only the earnest of our inheritance. Amen. You think I shout down here, you wait till I get over there. No more pain. No more sorrow. No more death. Praise God. Church, I don't know about you, amen, but I'm excited. Praise the Lord. Amen. I know what it means, praise God, amen, to worship the Lord. Praise God. You praise him for what he's done. You worship him for who he is. There is nobody like Jesus. No, I, I'm telling you, praise God, amen. If the president of the United States walked through that door, out of respect and honor, we would stand to our feet, put our hands together, and acknowledge the office. Well, I'm here to tell you, praise God, there's somebody that's bigger, that's greater, that's better, amen, than the president of the United States in this house. His name is Jesus. He's the King of kings. He's the Lord of lords. I just want us to understand how this thing works. You only get what you put in. Amen. Well, I'm not going to worship God. Right, you'll leave the same way you came. Praise the Lord. Some of us, amen, we have a need right now. Praise God. Some of us don't even realize our need. I'm going to just go ahead and present this the best I can. If I don't get to preach, amen, this morning, and all I do is talk, praise God, amen, it's still, amen, my microphone. <laughs> praise the Lord. You could have cancer raging in your body right now and not know it. You can have sickness, amen, praise God. You can have arthritis, amen, fixing to take place in your body, praise God. But I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you that praise and worship can unleash, amen, praise God, unlock and unfetter, amen, those things, praise God. We can get access into the throne room of God. We can get a healing from the Lord this morning. We can get blessed beyond blessing, amen, today. I don't know how you feel today, but I need a touch from God. I need the healing of the Lord. I need God to minister in my life. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Well, I got everything that I need. You're lying. Come on, come on. Amen. You don't have heaven yet. You hadn't made it to the other side yet. You don't know what a day will bring. You don't know what tomorrow holds. Amen. I am constantly reminded, praise God, I get phone calls people, amen, that have passed from this life. Some ready to meet God, some not ready to meet God. Amen. I had a man say one time, amen, well, you shouldn't judge. The Bible doesn't say that. It says judge no man, praise God, without first judging yourself. If you're going to judge, he said judge righteously. Paul said, for I have the mind of Christ and judge all things. Amen. There is a plan of salvation. There is a 
path of righteousness that God, amen, has designed for each and every one of us to walk. Amen. If we negate such great salvation, how shall we escape? Thank God, amen, for the privilege to be in the house of God. Somehow, amen, after last Sunday preaching, amen, a Thanksgiving message. Praise God, amen. It's disheartening to walk in here. Now, one of two things happened. Either they forgot how good God is, amen, or they were that turkey that was sacrificed on that platter. And that's why they're not here today. Now, I know some people are sick today. I know some people, amen, are traveling today, the Hunts, amen, are traveling to Abilene, the loss, amen, of Sister Hunt's baby brother in a terrible, terrible tragedy, a car accident. And the funeral is tomorrow, and so they had to leave today to get there because he's going to be preaching that funeral. Praise God. Our hearts go out to them. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. But I got a phone call on Thanksgiving Day, people that I used to be in church with. People, amen, some 20 years ago, amen, praise God. In fact, longer than that, 25 to 30 years ago, amen, in church together, rubbing shoulders to shoulders, amen, worshiping the same God, amen. And I get a phone call, amen, that this lady dies. The church, I just want to tell you, it can happen to any one of us. Amen. She had contracted COVID, uh, COVID, amen, and then went to the doctor. The doctor sent her home, said, well, you're well enough to go home. Praise God, amen. And she's having a hard time breathing, and she asked for oxygen. They said, sorry, we can't get you oxygen. She borrowed some oxygen from someone else, amen. But then she said, well, the doctor says I don't need it. So she stayed off of it, amen. And sitting in her chair, she became glassy-eyed. The husband looked at her and says, you don't look good. And she said, I need to go to the doctor. And before he could get her out of the chair, she fell to the floor and died. Amen. My hearts go out to them. Praise God, amen. It could happen to any one of us. Amen. I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to be honest with you. Praise the Lord. I hope the Lord is listening. Because when I leave this world, praise God, I've always said, I'd like to come up here and preach a good one. Preach a message of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Worshiping the King of Kings. Amen. And then after that service, just walk out the door and God give me a heart attack. Just let me go. That's the way I'd like to get out of here. I don't want to suffer in this world. Praise God. Amen. Church, I'm just telling you, amen, my time is coming. Time is short. The hourglass, amen, is running out. And we don't understand that, praise God, amen. Could we not thank God for this day? Could we not thank him, amen, for another service? Amen. Amen. Some of us think, amen, we're like Samson, praise God, and we can carry the gates of the city and we can whip him in a thousand Philistines at one meeting. Praise God. We think we're invincible, amen. But even Samson found out that he couldn't do anything without God. You ought to thank God, amen, that he's in the house today. Praise the Lord. Well, I opened it up because I wanted to read it to you. It says, praise you the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. And let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. If you have breath, this morning in your body it's on loan from God if you're breathing this morning amen praise God I can't believe that anybody has to make you lift your hands and praise the Lord don't be like that fig tree that was cursed because you wouldn't produce any fruit Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. There's nothing worse, amen, than a Pentecostal that will not acknowledge him. If you are truly Pentecostal and you have been born again of water, uh, of the water and of the spirit, amen, praise God. 
How can we sit silent when God has touched us and blessed us and filled us with his spirit? There's a lot of people in this world that need what you and I have. I am so blessed today, man, so honored today that God has called me by name. Amen. I'm a child of the King. I've been born again. I'm now a son of God through the spirit of adoption whereby now I can cry, Abba, Father. Amen. Praise the Lord. Where are you getting all that out of the book? Praise God. Amen. God invested his name in his church. God gave his church his royal blood. We have royal DNA in our body. They don't know what DNA stands for. It's divine nature. Amen. I'm not the same man that I was when I was born into this world. I've been born again. Praise God. Amen. If you're born once, you're going to die twice. Physical death, spiritual death, because there's an eternity that awaits. But if you've been born again, if you've been born twice, you're only going to die once. So if you don't want two funerals, you better make sure you got two births. My first birth made me a citizen of the United States. My second birth made me a citizen of heaven. Wow. I feel the Holy Ghost today. I know there's a lot of people that are missing. People are sick. Sister Crudis is not here today. She's not running a fever. She's not coughing. She's not nauseated. But uh, her temperature, amen, is, is below normal. Amen. Praise God. So we're praying, amen, that normality will come back. Praise God that God will touch her, something, a chemical imbalance in her life. It's very, very low. Praise God, amen. Normal temperature is 98.6. Hers was at 85-something this morning. And so we're praying for her, praise God. Just hasn't felt good for the last two days. Praise the Lord, amen. But thank God, amen, that God has allowed me to be in the house of God so I can pray for her. Amen. Oh, you could have stayed home and done that. Why? When I can go amen, to the house of God, amen, and mix with people of like precious faith, praise God. I'm here to tell you, it's not enough, amen, for one to pray. When you get somebody else, amen, that le uh, links up with you, praise God, and joins hands with you, and you begin to pray one for another, there's something about the power, amen, of collective prayer. <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise God. Somebody say amen. Somebody say tithes. Somebody say offerings. Praise God. If you want to be blessed, amen, praise God, pay your tithes, give your offerings. Amen. There's a box over there, praise the Lord, amen, that you can put your tithes and offerings in there. Well, I just don't believe in that. You will one day. Praise the Lord. You haven't read Malachi chapter 3, amen, wherein have we robbed God in tithes and offerings. Praise God. Give, amen, unto the Lord, amen. Praise God. The Bible says in Luke 6 and 38, Give, and it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. For with what measure you meet, with all it shall be measured to you again. You can't outgive God. Amen. Praise God. I don't know why I said that, amen, but it's good. Still good doctrine. Still good preaching. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, I'm saving it for a rainy day. Honey, it's going to rain on your parade if you ain't careful. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can be seated this morning. Amen. I'm so glad, amen, that each and every one of us are in the house of the Lord, those of us that are here. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We're fixing to dismiss the children here in just a minute. Now, Sister Crudis is not here, amen, so keep a close ear because when I give a closing here, amen, you'll know on the third closing to come back in. I'm going to do my best to get in and out of the pulpit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There's some preachers that think they got to preach an hour. Amen. But if they had studied well, they could have got it all done in 30 minutes. Amen. Praise God. Somebody say children's church. Amen. Children, you're dismissed. Amen. Back here through this, teachers go with them. Praise God. Amen. Come on, girls. Come Brother, on, boys. Brother Lee. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, if you don't love God, 
Amen. That's your problem. Amen. But I love him enough, amen, praise God, that I want to honor him and do what he says. It's so wonderful this morning, amen, to have Brother and Sister Kong's daughter with us today. It's so nice to have you with us today. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Now, I think, amen, if I got this right, are you a dental hygienist? You're about to be a dentist. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And she sees a lot of mouths. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So I'm going to pose to this great audience of believers, what's the worst thing, amen, than tooth decay? Truth decay. We need the Word of God. Amen. The Bible tells us, amen, how to be saved. Praise God. Amen. Yeah, we, we don't like to sugarcoat anything around here. Praise God. We, we like the plain truth. We like it straight and forward. Praise God. We like our feathers ruffled from time to time. Man, it's quiet out there. Praise the Lord. Let's stand and go to the word of the Lord this morning. Oh, wait a minute. Praise God. Amen. I, 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 need, I need to do something. Amen. Praise God. Brother and Sister Hunt, amen, have been met with two, two tragedies, two funerals, amen, one back-to-back, -back, amen. And I was wondering, amen, if we couldn't take up an offering, praise the Lord, and give, amen, to a cause to help them with some expenses, traveling expenses, food expenses, amen, praise God, amen, hallelujah. Now, I'm just going to put that on your heart, amen, praise God. And uh, if you would like to give, amen, to that cause and to help Brother and Sister Hunt, they're on the road today. They've got a lot of family. Uh, the loss, amen, of her youngest brother. It was a very uh, terrible tragedy, amen, praise God. But if we could somehow, amen, collectively take up an offering, praise God, and help them, uh, that would be tremendous, praise the Lord. So if you would like to give, amen, to help them, amen, in this situation, in this time of need, praise God, please, amen, would you come up afterwards, amen, and, and we'll take a check and we'll take a money order. And uh, we're still living in a day, we'll still take cash. Amen. And it'll go, amen, to this family to help them, amen, with some expenses. Praise God. All right, let's go to the word of the Lord. Somebody say, preach the word. Preach the word. Praise God, amen. There's two places of scripture. I want us to go to the book of Job in chapter 29. And I want us to go to Mark chapter 2. Praise the Lord. A lot of people, amen, that need to be prayed for. Praise God, amen. I got a list here before us. Remember Sister Rosser? Amen. Who has fractured her back in a fall. We continue to pray for her. Uh, Sister Stark, who is facing uh, surgery. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praying, amen, that she don't even have to have surgery. Praise God. Amen. Praying for uh, Brother Watts. This is my wife's uncle, Sister Sutter's uh, brother-in-law. Amen. That uh, has gone through surgery. I understand the surgery went well. Still needs our prayers. Let's remember Brother Henry Usury. He has an upper respiratory infection. Uh, and uh, he's up in years. Amen. Praise God. But we're praying that God will touch him and heal his body. We've got Henry. I'm sorry. Mike McAlpine. And uh, right now he's in induced coma state. Uh, they have put him under, amen, he has COVID, and we're praying for him. Steve Gonzalez, Ralph Galvon, uh, Pam Sheehan, Sister Monica, praying for her, and also, amen, the Hunt family, praise God, amen, praise the Lord. Brother and Sister Nieves, amen, are traveling today. Uh, they're on their way not only out of town, they're going out of state. They're not only going out of state, they're going out of country. Amen. So they definitely need our prayers. Praise God. Now, this is just me. This is not a time for traveling. This is not a time, praise God, amen, with an epidemic, amen, that right now that God is keeping in check, amen, praise the Lord. It, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's expanding in, in other nations. This is not a time to be going, amen, across borders. But as that may be, amen, we need to pray the prayer, amen, of faith over them. Amen. Praise God. All right, let's go to the word of the Lord. The book of Job in chapter 29. If you got it, say amen. amen. For those of you that don't know where it is, praise the Lord, it's the least read book in the Bible. Because people think that it says job. <laughs> Some people are afraid of work. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. 
And then, uh, amen, Mark chapter 2. Job 29, verse 15 and 16. Amen. This, this is a Job, the Bible said, continued his parable. This is the, the plight of Job in going through the things, amen, that, that he was going through. The loss of his loved ones, the loss of his family, the loss of his herds and his flocks, amen. Praise God, the loss of his children, the loss, amen, of a house, amen. He, he just seemed him and everything was taken from him all within a day. And so he's going through some things and remembering some things, amen, in the past while he was well blessed of the Lord, how that he helped other people. But I wanted to pick Pick up on a verse of scripture found in our text, verse 15. I want you to hear what Job is saying, amen, to the church this morning. I was eyes to the blind, and feet was I to the lame. I was a father to the poor, and the cause which I knew not, I searched out, amen. Praise God. I want you to hear, amen, this man's cry. And I want you to hear this man's declaration. He said, I was eyes to the blind and feet to the lame. With that said, let's go to Mark chapter 2. Praise the Lord. Amen. So good to have each and every one of you here. Amen. Praise God. Brother Reed, so good to see you. Praise God. Amen. Appreciate everybody here. So good to have Brother Yanez and Sister Yanez back, amen, from the Philippines. Praise the Lord. Praise God. I'm just thankful for everybody here. Sister Sharon, good to see you. And Gage. Gage, I'm glad you're here today. Praise God. Gage, one day you're going to get engaged. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Now, if I was your dad, I'd tell you that's okay. But you can't get married till you're 40. Amen. I want you to know what you're doing. Praise God. There was a little baby the other day. I saw it on a clip. Amen. Somebody sent it to me. And that little baby, praise God, the mother was trying to tell him when he grows up. He was only about two years old. He said, when you grow up, you're going to get married. And he says, I don't want to get married. And she said, how come you don't want to get married? And a two-year-old boy said, I want to be happy. <laughs> wow. Out of the mouth of babes. Praise God. Mark chapter 2, beginning at verse number 1. And again, he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. Now, i got to stop for just a moment. I realize you're standing. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. But you can't get anything better than what I just read. You got the word preaching the word. Right. Amen. Well, that went over like a lead balloon. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. That word B-O-R-N-E means he was carried by four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. I covered that, amen, in a message on a Wednesday night not too long ago. Jesus, amen, could forgive sins because he was God. Right. But I turn our attention to verse 12. And immediately he arose... And took up the bed and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. Praise God. I'm going to attempt, amen, this morning to teach and to preach, if the Lord will allow me, on this subject, a picture of the church. A picture of the church. You may be seated this morning. Praise God. Amen. Last week, amen, we preached a Thanksgiving message that involved ten men, ten lepers that were in need of healing and cleansing. And there was a great need, amen, that required a great response. Praise God.
If you've ever been healed, amen, there is something that God expects from each and every one of us. Sometimes we come to the house of God and we forget, amen, how, how sick we were, amen, before and how destitute we were at one time, praise the Lord. But God stepped in and God ministered and, and God healed us, praise the Lord, amen. And for a while, amen, we would come back and we would give thanks and worship God. But through time and time, praise God, amen, and can be an enemy, I mean, rather than a friend. And through time, there are some people that have forgotten what God has done in the past. And too often, you and I are poor in our returns. Amen. Praise the Lord. If we really understood how grand and how great that God has been in our lives from the first day we entered this world and took our breath, I don't believe that there would have to be any prompting, any cheerleading from this, uh, from the pulpit. Praise God to get us, Amen, to worship and to praise God and to give thanks unto the Lord. If we only knew of the things that God has blessed us with and the things that God has kept us from. I am mindful of the fact, praise God, that every day that according to 1 Peter 5 and 8, that I have an adversary who walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Satan is always on my trail. Satan is trying to get me to trip and to fall. He's always trying, amen, to kill me and to destroy me. But thanks God, amen, that God has kept me and I'm here today. And so therefore, amen, I feel that I can praise God, praise the Lord, without any tug or pull, amen, from anybody. Somebody say amen, praise God. And so last week we saw a picture of our world. We saw people who were defiled with sin, who were in need of divine help, people who needed to meet the Lord Jesus Christ. This is always the case. It's ever the cure, praise God, that if I can just get, amen, to where Jesus is, praise the Lord, then I can get my needs met, amen. I'm going to wait on you for just a moment, praise God, because there's a lot of medical science out there. There's a lot of doctors, praise God, in hospitals, and I'm not against them, praise the Lord. They're doing the best they can with what they have, but I'm here to tell you, there's just some things they can't fix. There's just some things that they can't handle, praise the Lord. So I always thank God that there is a place that I can go. There's a person that I can meet, that I can come to the Lord Jesus Christ and get an answer. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Getting people to Jesus is what it's all about. Jesus can heal them. Jesus can save them. Jesus can give them a reason for living. Jesus can change their night into a day and their sorrow into joy. Have we forgotten the verse in Isaiah 61 and 3? He's come to give us beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Amen. Sometimes, amen, we do get down. But thank God, God does not leave us there. God comes to our rescue. He knows, amen, the plight that you're facing. He knows, amen, what you're dealing with. Praise God. Has anybody ever gotten down? I'm here to tell you. I know a God, amen, that can get you back up. I know a God that can breathe life back into your soul. I know a God that can put joy back into your heart. Amen. Praise God. Getting people to Jesus is the answer for our sin-sick world. It's the remedy for this 21st century. If you meet me, nothing will happen. But if you ever meet Jesus, you will never be the same. No, praise God, amen. If you're still like you were, amen, from the first day that you heard the gospel message, you still need to meet Jesus. Amen. If you ever meet Jesus, it will totally change your entire life and lifestyle. Praise God. It will totally change your outlook on this world. Amen. I got a phone call the other day, or in fact, I made the phone call to a friend of mine. He sounded down. Amen. He told me that a very special friend of his in the church, raised in church, his son, 23 years old, tried to commit suicide. I don't know what happened in his life. I don't know how he got down, but when he got to the hospital, amen, after taking all of those pills, trying to kill himself, something began to happen. Somebody began to pray. He woke up and said, my God, I don't want to go to hell. I'm here to tell you, it is the mercy of God, amen, that even God steps in, amen, when we've done everything wrong. 
Amen. It's the remedy for our day is seeing Jesus Christ. Praise God. Please bear with me this morning. Praise God. I remember after taking this church. Amen. It wasn't but just a few months later. We had some people that used to come to this church who no longer come to this church. Praise God. But there was a mother, a single mother, and she had a boy, and the boy was about six or seven years old. Amen. And while I was coming out of my office on a Sunday morning, heading to this platform to start church, amen, that little boy and mother came through the side door that little boy looked at me and he said look mama Jesus <laughs> I looked at that mother and I said boy when he gets older he's going to be disappointed <laughs> because if you meet me praise God even nothing's going to happen Nothing is going to change because I can't heal you. I can't save you. I can't deliver you, praise God. But if you ever meet Jesus, it will totally change your entire life, praise God. He'll give you a total adjustment in every area of your life. He won't leave you the same way he found you. That is a lie he meant from main religion today, telling you come as you are, stay as you are. Honey, if you ever meet Jesus, he's not going to leave you the same way he found you. So our text, amen, praise God, in Mark chapter 2 speaks of a story that's more than just a story. It is a picture, I feel, of the church, amen, in living print. It's what the church is all about. It's one of special interest in the writings of God. It shows us how vital, amen, the church is. Mark chapter 2, there's four men, they're carrying a cot, and a fifth man is on the cot, praise God. He's a paralytic, he's sick with a palsy, he can't help himself, he can't even walk on his his own praise the Lord he needs someone to help him did you realize there's some people in our world that are in such a state of mind and a state amen of body that they cannot help themselves praise God that's why you and our commission of the Lord to pray one for another that's why you and our commission of God is to help one another praise God we are to be given to hospitality more than that even we need to go out of our way to help people to get in the way well, I'm doing what I can, praise God. Four men carrying a cot, one man on top of that bed. He's unable to help himself. He's in need of the help of others. It's more than just a story of the power of Jesus Christ. It's the story of the purpose of the church. Amen. The Holy Ghost has seen fit to record this event three times in the book of life. It's found in our text in Mark 2. It's found in Matthew chapter 9 and Luke chapter 5. And I believe that anything the pen of inspiration rights is of great significance especially if it's mentioned more than once three times amen the story is written I'm here to tell you it's with purpose it tells us praise God for unnamed men who I call amen for heroes amen of the of the Bible they took time out of their time to carry a man to Jesus Christ this is the purpose of the church amen it's not here to slap one another on the back it's not here amen to be given platitudes and gratitudes among us there are people out there in the world that are dying that are in great need and the church has got to be able to lift a hand and to help them to find their way amen. somebody said amen. amen praise God hallelujah Amen. Three times it's found in the gospel of Jesus Christ. God wants to make sure that you and I don't miss this. Amen. It's the church's work. It's the church's business. It's the church's calling. The reaching of the lost, the saving of souls involves the church of the living God. I'll wait on you. Praise God. Amen. God, amen, told us when he made the church, he made the church, amen, with a purpose in mind. Praise God. He said, after you get the Holy Ghost, you're going to be my witness. Witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the other part, uttermost parts of the earth. Praise God. God says, Even the church has a purpose. He didn't give us the Holy Ghost just to sit on a pew, He gave us the Holy Ghost to reach someone else. Well, that's the preacher's job. That's the problem we have today. We think that the preacher is supposed to preach every Bible study, supposed to reach every soul, save every person, praise God. Honey, you and I, amen, have been called of God. There's a ministry on every one of our lives. It may not be behind a pulpit, but I'm here to tell you, if you're in the church, God wants you, amen, to reach somebody, bring someone to the house of God. I've often said it before. I've had people say, well, you know, we run him in on an average 70 or 80 people. Can you imagine if everybody won one soul? 
Can you imagine what would happen, praise God, overnight? The church, amen, would bulge. The church, amen, would double in number, praise God. But we think, amen, that only the preacher, amen, has licensed, amen, to reach a soul. When God filled you with the Holy Ghost, that was the mandate of the gospel for you to go you therefore into all the world and teach all nations, praise God. Quit waiting on the preacher. Get some gospel shoes on your feet. Go out there and find somebody. There's a bag lady under the bridge that needs a better life, amen. There's somebody out there that right now is crying, amen, in despair saying, I wish somebody would knock my door. I'm not being unkind, praise God, but I'm here to tell you, if you've never won a soul, amen, you've missed your purpose in life. Amen. Praise God. I've won souls to the Lord. I've knocked doors. I've ministered to people. I've prayed in hospitals. I've prayed in grocery stores. I even prayed in tax offices. Amen. For people that were sick, people that needed a cure. Amen. Praise God. I've brought people to the house of God, picked them up. Amen. Yes, it's inconvenient. Yes, it takes time. Yes, it takes an effort. Praise God. But can I tell you, amen, I understand the value of a soul. I know exactly, praise God, why God saved me. I know, amen, the purpose was not for me just to sit idle and to stand idle. Praise God. God wants us to bear fruit, and the fruit of a Christian is another Christian. I'm preaching now, praise God. You have have within you if you have the Holy Ghost the capacity to reach somebody to help somebody praise God amen, amen. boy I hate it when that preacher gets on that praise God he wants me to get involved praise God amen yes God expects you and I to get involved in this great campaign of evangelism and reaching the lost can I get an amen Praise God. It involves the entire church. You and I are needed in this campaign, praise God, of evangelism. Our city, our society, our world still needs the church. I am convinced that the New Testament pattern has never been surpassed nor replaced. Matthew 28, 19, he said, go ye therefore and teach all nations. Mark 16, 15, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. We've always labeled the emphasis, amen, on the teaching and the preaching. But we have missed the first part. Even praise God. Before you can teach and preach, you got to go therefore. You got to get out, praise God, and knock doors. You got to invite someone to the house of God. Can I get an amen in the house? Because it's first, amen, and foremost in the word of God. He said, I want you to be involved. It's a requirement of each and every one of us, praise God. You will run into somebody that I will never, ever meet. You will meet someone along the way, perhaps, that I will never, ever find, praise God. And so God has put you in a particular place at a particular time to witness and to bear witness to that person. Have you ever felt the conviction of the Lord when God nudged you and said, I want you to talk to this person? I have. Amen. I have felt the compelling force of the Holy Ghost, uh, the presence of God. Uh, I've walked through places uh, and God would put a check in my spirit and says, I want you to talk to this person. I want you to tell them that I love them. I want you to tell them about a better life. Praise God. Church, I'm here to tell you, I've had times, amen, that God convicted me to talk to someone and I've even, amen, refrained from talking to them. And when they left, amen, the opportunity was over and I had to go and find a place and repent. I realized, God, that person and, amen was there for a particular time and I should have responded amen correctly amen, amen. amen. praise God can't think of their name right now last name Smith Praise God, amen. I'm at the hospital. I'm trying, amen, to, 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 to get, 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 get to this, amen, as fast as I can. I remember at the hospital praying for an elderly lady. Amen. They said he'd, she'd never come out of the hospital. She's so sick. She needs, amen, a surgery. Amen. But the doctor, amen, was in a dilemma. He said she's so sick she won't survive the surgery. But without the surgery, she's going to die. Amen. Somebody asked me to go and meet this lady in the hospital and go and pray for this lady in the hospital. Praise God. And you know me. Amen. Praise God. I'm willing to pray. I want everybody saved. I want everybody to have what I have. Amen. Praise God. And so I went up there. Amen. To pray for her. Knocked on that hospital door. Amen. Finally I was invited in. Prayed the prayer of faith. She not only amen, came through the surgery. Then after that praise God. They said that she'll never leave the hospital 
hospital. She'll never get better. She's only going to get worse. And I went up there every day, and I prayed for that lady week after week, day after day, praise God, just knowing that God had put her into my life. And there's going to bear witness, amen, of somebody. There's going to be fruit, praise God. Come on, church, hear me now. And while, amen, one day, I'm going up there to pray for her again. After praying for her, I'm walking down, amen, that hospital corridor, down that hallway, and all of a sudden I pass a waiting room, and the Holy Ghost, amen, moved in my heart and said, I want you to go in that room. There's a lady in there that needs prayer. I walk in. There's a lady. She's in there. She's crying. I ask her, amen, what's wrong? Praise God. She tells me about her husband. An antenna from a motorcycle went through her husband's eye, lodged in the brain, fell into a coma, rushed to the hospital. Praise God. And now, amen, he's in ICU. Praise God. And he's in a coma. Would you please pray for my husband? And we prayed, and God responded. Long story short, God not only brought him out of a coma, God healed his brain and healed his eye, and they couldn't even find where the antenna had gone through his eye or into his brain. That was the day, amen, praise God, of witness, amen, praise the Lord, just doing, amen, what God has called me. said, well, I can't do that, Brother Crudus. Why not? If you have the Holy Ghost, you can pray the prayer of faith. Amen? Somebody say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. It's a requirement of, every, of every, each and every one of us because people need, amen, to be healed and people need to be taught or they will never come to the knowledge of truth. They'll never see the errors of their ways. They'll never grasp the power of real salvation. Notice I said the words real salvation, praise God. I'm not talking about, amen, this name it and claim it, grab it and blab it kind of stuff. I'm not talking about this charismatic puke, amen, that people are just telling you only believe, amen, praise God. We're living in a generation that they're teaching people, amen, to believe, amen, but not teaching them to obey. Amen? amen? Now, I just said more than a lot of you responded, praise God. But in our text, Job 29, 15, I wanted to read this because, amen, it dealt with my heart. I was eyes to the blind, feet to the lame. It is a fundamental principle found all throughout the Word of God. It is a truth that we need to help other people. No one can make it to God on their own. That's why we have the fivefold ministry. That's why we have the need of a pastor. That's why we have the need of the church, praise God, because we are now eyes to the blind. We are the lame to the feet, praise God. We can bring them to Jesus. Amen. It speaks of the necessity of reaching other people, leading others, amen, to Christ, helping them, amen, to find the way. Those who have been born again can help others to be born again. You can't give them the Holy Ghost, but you can sure lead them, amen, to an altar. You can pray with them through the prayer of repentance, praise God. You can tell them about the goodness and the power of God. Can I get a witness? Those who have received the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ can help others to receive that same gospel. We are a light to a darkened world. We are called to be ambassadors of Jesus Christ. If I know anything about being an ambassador, amen, an ambassador of the United States goes to a foreign land, to a foreign country, praise God, not just so that they can identify as being an ambassador. It's so for, it's good for goodwill. It's so that we can bring them to a better understanding, praise God. Do you realize, amen, to be an ambassador of Jesus Christ uh, carries him in a great responsibility and a great weight, praise God. Uh, amen. We are missionaries, amen, praise God. Not all together on foreign field, uh, but right here in our own backyard. It uh, never ceases to amaze me that people, praise God, think that the only people that can be one to the Lord are on foreign lands. Uh, and right here in our own backyard, we got people from every nation, amen, that need, amen, the power of God in their lives, uh, that need the gospel of Jesus Christ, amen. Uh, I'm here to tell you there are people outside this church right now that are waiting on somebody to witness to them and to bring them to the truth of God amen. Amen. amen praise God hallelujah maybe it doesn't bother you amen but it bothers me I mean we got people amen that are going to a devil's hell and without the church becoming the church, people will die lost. Evangelism is still required. Outreach is still needed. And it will take everyone doing their part to reach the lost. Amen? 
I'm going to try it again. We do not well if we keep silent. We do not well if we keep still. Amen? Every one of us has a neighbor. I don't care if the neighbor's half a mile down the way, praise God. If you live out in the country, but you have a neighbor, praise God. Amen. Why not knock a door, invite them to the house of God? Oh, they're not interested. Since when did you become God? Come on, come on. Amen. And all the time, praise God, while you're thinking, amen, they're not interested. God has been working on their soul. God has been talking to their heart, praise God. God has allowed, amen, a situation to arise. And they're sitting there in their spirit and in their mind. And they're saying, oh, amen, if things were only different, if I could just get an answer from God, if somebody would come and tell me. Amen. You know how I got the Holy Ghost? Somebody told me about it. Amen. You know how I got to church? Somebody brought me. Amen. Somebody invited me to the house of God. Don't worry, I'm going to get there in just a moment. Praise God. God didn't save you and me to sit a pew. He didn't give us the Holy Ghost. He meant for us to stand still. He gave us the Holy Ghost to be his witnesses. Someone still out there needing God, needing this truth, and needing salvation. And someone must go to them, praise God. Hear me now. I'm trying to help us. Listen, our world loves to quote Romans 10 and 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I stand with that scripture, believe in that scripture. While the world has taken it out of context, it's time for the church to put it into context. If you'll read the next two verses. It says in verse 14, amen, in verse 15, how then shall they call on him and whom they have not believed? And how then shall they believe in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? The question is asked four times, how, 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 how are they going to be saved? How are they going to believe? How are they going to be delivered? Praise God, amen. I'm here to tell you, praise the Lord. It's when the church gets mobile and the church gets active. It's when we start doing our part each and every Every one of us can invite someone to the house of God. It may be your neighbor. It may be my neighbor. Praise God. It may be somebody in the grocery store. But I'm here to tell you it could be a co-worker. But I'm trying to tell you, praise God, some of them would come if you would but ask. Amen. Praise God. How, how, how. The answer has always been in the sending and the going. It's not, it's not this the principle, amen, of our text, amen, the facts, amen, of this man coming to Jesus in Mark chapter 2. It has never ceased to amaze me. This story, praise God, is more than just a story. It is a picture of the church, amen, praise God, about the Lord's business. Someone went, someone carried, someone brought, praise God, amen. And thus, amen, we see this beautiful picture of the purpose of the church. We all have something we can do. We all have part and parcel in the reaching of the lost. Let me back up, praise God, amen, hallelujah. There is something that every one of us can do. Amen? Praise God. Everybody can push a vacuum. Everybody can hold a mop. Everybody can carry a broom. Amen. I I'm just trying to tell you, praise God. Some of us, amen, we think it's below our dignity. Amen. Praise God. Amen. To be called a janitor. Amen. You're looking at the greatest janitor there's ever been. Every church that I've been in, praise God, I found, amen, the building in disrepair. I became the ma maintenance man. I became the electrician. I became the plumber. I became the carpenter. I became the janitor. Praise God. It's not beyond me, amen, to stoop down and pick up a piece of paper and put it in the waste Back at it basket. It's not beyond me, praise God, uh, amen, to make sure that the trash gets carried out. It's not beyond me to make sure that the church is presentable for every visitor that walks through that door. I'm here to tell you, there is something you and I can do, praise God. Uh, if you feel, amen, you can't teach a Bible study, why can't you come down and help clean the church? Somehow, amen, that has become, amen, the pastor's responsibility. Honey, I'm here to tell you, praise God. You and I, amen, are missing, amen, that which is afforded to us. Put your hand to the plow. Get busy in the house of God. Pick up, amen, those things. Uh, let somebody know that you're there, amen, to help. Hello? Amen? Now, I don't want a show of hands. When's the last time you cleaned the church? 
Oh, well, that, that position's already filled. Honey, I promise you, praise God, they'll be glad to move over. Amen? Everybody is needed, praise God. Everyone is commissioned. And our text of Mark chapter 2, are you ready? There's four men unnamed carrying a cot, climbing a ladder, opening the roof. We may not have the same position, but we all have the same mission. We may not all have the same gifts, but we all have the same assignment. Oftentimes it takes the doctrine of Paul, the eloquence of Apollos, and the sharp words of Peter, and even, amen, the love of John to do an effective work. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 3 and 6, he said, I have planted, Apollos watered, and God gave the increase. Now he says, he that planteth and he that watereth are one. That means uh, we're in this thing together. We're of one mind and one accord. We're here for the same purpose. We're here, he meant to make the the church look its best. We're here for the church to grow. Praise God. Amen. And somebody's going to plant. Somebody's going to water. And God has promised him in that he's going to give the increase. What is it that you don't understand? Praise the Lord. I'm here to tell you, you can plant just as well as any man. You can water just as well as any other person. Praise God. You and I need to understand. We need to find our place in the kingdom. I had to tell somebody the other day that's struggling with obeying the word of God. When they marched around the city of Ai, or Jericho, excuse me, amen, in the walls fell down. The Bible said that every man stood in his place. There is a place for you in this kingdom. There is a place for you in this church, praise God. And God says if you want victory and you want triumph, amen, let's get people involved, praise God, and do the work of God. Amen. amen. I know I'm waxing long, praise the Lord, but there is no service tonight, no Bible study tonight. Amen. That's, that won't take up until the beginning of the new year if the Lord doesn't come before then. Somebody say amen. I'm talking about the picture of the church, the ministry, amen, that God has afforded each and every one of us. One man alone would never have been enough to carry this man. I want you to get the picture. One man alone would never have gotten the man to Jesus Christ. Hello? Amen. That's why your prayers are coveted. That's why we need you, praise God, amen. Now listen, people have different talents, different abilities, praise God. That's, that, that does not mean that somebody's better than the other person. It just means that God has fitted his church. Amen. But together, amen, these four men were able to accomplish, amen, something great. Something began to take place. Together they accomplished, they overcame, and they prevailed. One can put to flight a thousand, but two ten thousand. Their miraculous power when you and I come together, praise God, amen. I'm here to tell you, when you and I come to church to the house of God, it's bad enough to watch one saint walk through that door, amen, and Satan, amen, say, well, there's only one of them, but when the rest of start coming in, Satan begins to tremble because one can put to flight a thousand, but two, ten thousand. It's a miraculous power in our minds. Amen. Praise God. We say, well, one can put to flight a thousand, two can put to flight two thousand. No, God says uh, there is a power in unity when you gather together. That's why when we come to the house of God, uh, we can have a move of, the God, of God. We can have the spirit of the Lord show up and manifest itself. Hey, honey, I'm here to tell you, your praise, your prayer, your worship, amen, is needed praise God, coupled with everybody else. Amen? Four men in one mind, in one accord. Four men determined and decided. Four men intent and resolute, amen, to get this man to Jesus. Now listen, getting people to Jesus is not always easy. Are you ready? There will be obstacles. There will be hindrances. There will be difficulties and challenges to bring people to the house of God. The carrying of this man was not easy. And then, he meant to face it all. When they came to the house where Jesus was preaching, they couldn't even get in through the door because of the crowd. I mean, Jesus was the talk of the town. He'd been healing everything that was sick, opening up blinded eyes. He'd been cleansing the lepers, unstopping deaf ears, raising the dead, praise God. And people came to see Jesus and came to hear him preach. Not only that, there was the trouble of having to climb to the roof. The effect, the disappointments, the inconvenience, the difficulty was all there, amen. But they all believed. 
that if they could just get him to Jesus, that Jesus could and would heal him. That was their faith. I wonder what kind of faith we have, praise God. What if I bring that person, if I bring that person, amen, praise God, to the house of God. I'm not sure. Amen. I'm not eloquent. Amen. I don't have it. Hey, I'm here to tell you, don't you know that God can move on the preacher to preach something even anointed and under the inspiration of God that can dig deep furrows into a heart and a soul that can move a person to an altar don't you realize amen that it's more than just man that's working it's God that's working amen we'll try it again praise God they believed that if they could just get him to Jesus praise God man that's what I call bulldog tenacity are you ready I'm just sharing with you I remember when I got the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Pitiful sight. Amen. As far as I was concerned, I'm talking about me, but not the power of God. Praise the Lord. I was unlearned. I didn't know a lot about the scriptures, praise God. But this one thing I knew, I knew about the power of God. God filled me with the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm trying to help us, praise God, to understand that you don't have to be a philosopher. Amen. You don't have to be a doctor of the law. You don't have to be a preacher. Amen. To reach somebody for God. To be a witness unto the Lord. I remember when I got the Holy Ghost, I began to speak to other people. I began to tell others, amen. I couldn't answer all their questions, but I knew that if I could just get them to church, my preacher would take care of that. Hello? God could handle that situation. You're not hearing me. Praise God, amen. So I began to invite everyone that I met. I invited strangers, co-workers, people, amen, that I had rubbed shoulders with, praise God. I began to witness to a Baptist preacher, Mr. Kitchen, praise the Lord. Been in his, his ministry, amen, for something like 20 or 30 years, praise God. And here I am, young new convert, don't know which side is up, amen. And I come up and I tell him, said, man, I got to tell you of the greatest thing that has ever happened in my life. And I began to witness to him about the power of God, about the baptism of the Holy Ghost, about a transformed and changed life. Amen. Praise God. And it didn't stop there. Then I began to witness to people at the Air Force. Amen. Where I was at. Amen. Service people. Praise God. Friends. Amen. That I knew. People that I played basketball with during my earthly years. Amen. I began to bring people to the house of God. I couldn't answer all their questions, but I knew if I could just get them in the door, if I could just get them to the house of God, then God could do a work, amen, and he could move upon the man of God to the preacher. Have you ever asked something, read something in your Bible you don't understand? Isn't it amazing that maybe the next service, the preacher gets up and he starts expounding the word of God, answers your question right from the word of God. Church, I'm here to tell you, we underestimate the power of God. We underestimate the working hand of God. Don't forget, praise God, when you come to this church, there's more than just flesh in this house there's the spirit of the almighty in this place doing the work amen now hold on praise God and then I met a man his name was Ted church of Christ preacher son you talk about witnessing to a popsicle he was cold as ice I'm here to tell you they are so staunch Praise God, sometimes, amen. But let me tell you something. Praise God, I began to invite him and his wife. Knocked on his door, he invited me in. Praise God, because he was going to win me. Woo! Honey, you ain't never going to win God. God's going to win you. So I went in and we got to talking, praise God. Talking about the power of God, the Holy Ghost, which he had never experienced in the book of Acts. Now watch. Listen to me. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get as, as quick as I can. Praise God. But I love this. He said, sit down, boy. He put on a tape. He had preached a message. Had it on a cassette tape. That's dating myself. Amen. Praise God. I can remember when they had eight tracks. I can remember when they had reel to reel. Amen. I can remember, amen, when they had 33s. 
and 45s. Praise God. And 78s. Whoa, you're really going back, Moses. And I listened to that. He preached the message. Got done. He clicked that thing. I says, what do you think about that? And I said, well, that's pretty good. But I said, if you, if you would have brought this out, or you could have added this from the Word of God, and all of a sudden he looks at me and goes, well, well, yeah, I never thought about that. Amen. Praise God. Now I'm going to tell you something. I was unlearned. Amen. I didn't have a whole lot of knowledge. But what I did have exceeded, amen, the knowledge of men. Because the Bible says that when they bring you, amen, praise God, before councils, take no thought of what you're going to say. The Holy Ghost will give you what to speak. Now hear me now, praise God. And the Holy Ghost was resonating right then and there and ministering, praise God. And I told him and I said, Ted, amen, you need the Holy Ghost. You need the baptism, amen, of the Holy Ghost. You need Christ in you, the hope of glory, praise God. Because through that you will get revelation and understanding, praise God. God and knowledge. Now listen to me. He looked at me and he kind of got a little puffed up and he says, listen boy, he said, you're ignorant and you're unlearned. Amen. You are just a novice. He used those words, novice. I said, yes, you're right. Praise God. I'm a novice to a lot of things in the word of God. Amen. But this one thing I know, where I was blind, now I see. Praise God. Where I was dead, now I'm alive. Where I was lost, now I'm saved. Now hear me now. And that man looked at me, praise God, and all of a sudden his wife, she's standing there. Her name was Vi, praise God. And Vi put her hand on the shoulder of her husband. She's bawling like a baby. Tears are flooding her face. She looked at her husband, Ted, we need to believe this guy. Amen. There's something he's got that we don't have. Are you ready? nearly jumped out of my seat when they came to church and my preacher got to preach to them. Wow. Praise God. Well, amen. It didn't do much for you, but it did a whole lot for me. Praise God. I often wonder, who were those four men? I mean, they're unnamed. I often wonder, amen, who was that one man that was so sick? Come on, church. You need to learn to put yourself in the picture. How'd you get here? Don't tell me you woke up one morning, praise God, and just thought, well, I'm going to go get saved. Amen. Somewhere along the line, it may have been years, may have been months, praise God, but God began to put things into place, and God began, he meant to stir your heart, and then God reached on the other side of town and stirred another heart, and that person says, man, I feel the pulling power of God. I think I'll go knock doors today, and all of a sudden, you knocked a door. Honey, let me tell you something. I've had a lot of doors sh shut and slammed in my face, praise God. I've had a lot of people he meant just simply say no but I'm here to tell you after I knocked him in those 30 or 40 doors and nobody wanted what I had but that one door that said would you come in I've been praying I've been seeking God I've got an, a question to ask you praise God honey I'm here to tell you that one door that was open amen will make the difference amen to the 30 and 40 that are closed but thank God amen I wasn't sitting back doing nothing I just wanted to reach somebody for God Amen. Praise God. Who was that one man? Put yourself there. Are you ready? Put your family there. All right, I'm going to ask you a question. Amen. I got to get serious. I got 10 minutes. Are they worth the trouble? Are they worth the effort? Are they worth being saved? Amen. Many of us have family members that aren't living for God. Amen. We got relatives, amen, that don't know the Lord. Praise God. I want to ask you, amen. Amen. Are they worth saving? How far are we willing to go? How much are we willing to do? Paul said in Romans eleven fourteen, 14, if by any means I may save some. 1 Corinthians 9, 22, he said, to the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Now, while the world and the denominational church world has taken this to believe that any and all methods are acceptable as long as the desired result is obtained, amen, 
And now they've given themselves to situational ethics, praise God, that we can violate the word of God as long as it brings some good, amen. Now they preach, amen, a social gospel that we don't have to be strict on the message, praise God. And now they begin, amen, to tolerate and overlook sin and sins of the people. But that's not what Paul was saying when he said what he did. He said to be all things to all men requires the strongest of consistency and constraint. It does not lead us to tolerate that which is sinful. It does not lead us to keep back any truth because it's unpopular. It does not lead us to do anything that would compromise the Christian faith and the doctrines of Christ. Amen. Romans 14, 16, Paul writes and says, Let not your good be evil spoken of, praise God. When he said, I became all things, amen, praise God, and by all means, amen, to save some. What he was saying, praise God, I'm willing, amen, to get down to the level of a Gentile, praise God, so that I can reach him. I'm willing to feel what he he feels, amen. I'm willing to put my place in his place, amen. I'm willing to be a Jew if that's what it's going to take. I'm willing to feel, amen, what a Jew feels, praise God. But honey, he never compromised the truth, amen. He never tolerated evil, praise God. He was a man, amen, that was consistent and constant when it came to the word of God. Let me try it again. He was consistent and compliant in the things that were most essential, but he was most yielding in the things not essential. Let me explain that. 1 Corinthians 8 and 13, he said, Wherefore, if meat make my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world standeth. He put himself, praise God, uh, in that position. Well, if they believe him in that this meat is wrong and eating this kind of meat, praise God, he said, I simply won't eat it, praise God. That has nothing to do with salvation. What you eat or don't eat has nothing to do with your salvation. I'm waiting on you, praise God. Uh, amen. If you want to eat pork, you can eat pork, praise God. If you want a BLT, you can have a BLT, but if it offends my brother, I just won't do it. Amen? Because in one place, he said, whether we eat or whether we don't eat, he said, we're none the better. It doesn't make you spiritual. Amen? Well, I'm doing the best I can. I have made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. All means, all means. What does that mean? He preached everywhere he went, and he preached to everyone. He left no one out. He conversed with both Jew and Gentiles alike. Whether there were kings or governors, he witnessed. Whether they were soldiers or slaves, he preached. Whether they were scholars or servants, amen, he met with them. He could preach to a congregation of many, and he would even preach to a congregation of one. When I pastored in Oklahoma, I took a very small country church, just a handful of people, amen, but they loved God. Amen. Thank the Lord he did bring revival. Praise God, amen. And the church secretary, she was a dear lady, dear saint of God. Her husband, amen, was in law enforcement, and they were up in years. They, when I say up in years, amen, you got to understand, amen, praise God. I was much younger than I am now. Amen, this is 25 years ago. And uh, they were in their mid-70s, amen, praise God. And one night, I'll never forget, amen, after a Wednesday night service, amen, and just the handful of people that came and the hand people, handful of people, amen, that left, amen, after service, this church secretary's husband came up to me, Brother Downey, Brother Downey says, you know what I like about you? I mean, I thought he was going to say, man, you got some revela revelational jazz. I mean, praise God. I man, you, you know how to feed us. I mean, you, you take those things and string them like a pearl necklace. Praise God. You just keep adding and keep adding. He didn't say that. He said, let me tell you what I preach about you. He said, there ain't but about eight or nine of us in church tonight, and you preach like the house is full. Amen. Whoops. I'm trying to I'm trying to be kind. Praise God. There's some people, amen, that think they're called to preach and they never want a soul. They're demented thought, amen, praise God. How how demented are they to think, amen? If they can't win someone at six feet, how are they gonna win them at thirty feet? Amen. Well, I got to have a crowd to preach. Honey, not me. 
Man, I preach to myself, praise God, and I get a good response. Amen? Amen? I'm just, I'm just trying to help you. It doesn't matter how big the church is. There are preachers today. I'm trying to be kind. Praise God, amen. That when a church is open, the first thing they do is get on the phone. How many are they running? What does it matter? How much does it pay? What does it matter? Praise God. It's whether or not God has called you there. Well, amen. Praise God. Blot that out of the tape. Nobody wants to hear that anyways. Praise God. He preached, amen, to every culture, to every religious person. Amen. He wrote letters to both the rich and the poor, to the common and to the elite. He wrote letters, amen, to the Romans and to the Ephesians. He wrote letters to the Galatians and the Corinthians, praise God. He just simply was saying, I have made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. You see, Paul used every means to save the lost. He prayed for them. He preached to them. He wrote letters for them. And one more thing, he lived the life before them. Hear me now. He lived the truth everywhere he went. He was an example of the believer. Now hear me now. People don't need to hear a sermon as much as they need to see one. Brother Crudus, man, you act like you really believe this stuff. I do. You act, amen, praise God, amen, that this is salvational. It is. Amen. So I'm here to tell us, praise God. There's some things that we need to understand. Let me close. Somebody say five minutes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, he never compromised. He never condoned sin. He never tolerated evil. But he did love people. He knew the value, amen, of a soul. And I feel, amen, that the value of souls today has been lost by many today. Where is the burden for the lost? Does it not bother you, praise God, when you see someone across the street, amen? And we say they're good people and they've got this and they've got that, but they don't have the true plan of salvation. Does it not burden your heart, amen, to pray for them? I've got people, amen, that I've invited to the house of God. I'm still waiting for them to come. Praise the Lord. When the time and the circumstance, amen, convenes, amen, praise God, we might just see them walk through that door, but it won't be because I haven't invited them to the house of God. I've got a neighbor that's constantly asking me when something happens, happens on the news he comes running over and says man what's going on over in Russia man what's going on now with China what's happening praise God amen with this missile what's going on amen praise God with this storm amen praise the Lord and I take my Bible and I take him amen to the scriptures and I begin to tell him we're living in the last days these are the things amen that are happening praise God he says what about this pandemic and I said the Bible talks about a pestilence in the last days just prior to the coming of the Lord I said we're closer than we've ever been and I'll watch this guy start shaking he says man I got to go in the house and I said I thought you want he says man I, I'm nervous now well good praise God I'm hoping amen that he has amen a nervous breakdown so I can take him to Jesus everybody say amen. amen praise God and so in our text and I'm closing four men expending a lot of energy and a lot of time and they come to the house amen where Jesus is and they can't even get through the door and here I feel Mark would have us to see something very important, something that we need to get a hold of. They did not turn away. They didn't say that it can't be done. Hear me now. This is going to be one of my greatest points in this entire service. We seem at times to content ourselves with doing what we can with what we're able to do by our own strength and our own might. But please tell me, where in the scriptures is there any record of God's work ever being accomplished by what we can do? Listen, we don't need any help from heaven to do what we can do. We don't need any Holy Ghost to do what we can do. So our business and our mandate is not just doing what we can, it's doing what we can. I'm going to let that register. We're always saying, but I can't do this. I can't do that, praise God. You can do what you can't. I'm going to preach a little bit. Are you ready? Praise God, amen. 
Paul said it this way in Philippians 4 and 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. What he was saying is I'm not doing what I can. I'm doing what I can't through Christ. Zechariah said it this way. Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. You're not doing what you can, amen, praise God. Amen, by your own might and power. You're doing what you can't through the power of God. Jesus said, John 15 and 5, for without me, you can do nothing, but with him, we can do all things. So our witnessing and our reaching the lost is not based only on what we can do, but on what we can't do. It's based on what God can do and what God is already doing. Amen? Amen. That's why, praise God, when we witness and we knock doors and we invite people to the house of God, please hear me, praise God. It's not what you can do. It's what you can't do, but he's doing it. He's the one that conditions the heart. He's the one that sets before us an open door. He's the one, amen, that reaches the lost. Praise God. So we must never ever admit defeat or failure even if we're living in perilous times like today God is still on the throne he still has all power in heaven and earth even if darkness and gross darkness is upon the land the gospel of Jesus Christ is still the true light whether it's winter or summer spring or fall whether it's first century or 21st century the Holy Ghost is still the same so for the next two minutes visualize the scene four men praise God carrying a man sick of the palsy they get to the place and the door, amen, is flooded with people. There's a crowd and they can't get in. They didn't admit defeat. They didn't admit failure. And so they climbed up to a roof, praise God. And on this roof, amen, there is no window. Praise the Lord. And they began to break up this room. Amen. Praise God. And hear me now. Amen. And then all of a sudden, while a hole, amen, is being made, you got mud and straw that's coming down, dust and dirt that's falling. Praise God. Amen. And a hole is opened up in the middle of this house. And the people begin to look up. And all they see is the bottom of a cot. And this cot is being lowered down. What are these men doing? They're doing, amen, praise God, not what they can. They're doing what they can't, praise God. They're bringing him to Jesus. They believe in their heart, amen, praise God, that Jesus can and will heal him. If you can't get them through the door, bring them through the roof. If you can't get them through the gate, take them over the wall. If they don't understand the word believe, try the word come. It's a picture of the church. Praise God. Not only doing what they can, but doing what they can. Praise God. Let's all stand. You know what they were doing? They were fulfilling the requirements set forth in the epistle of James chapter 2. They didn't sit on the sideline, Brother Hamilton, and say, I believe Jesus can heal them. I believe Jesus can save them. I believe they were fulfilling the epistle of James chapter 2, verse 17, verse 20. When it says faith without works is dead, being alone. I believe, amen, praise God, they believed, amen, that God would heal them. And God, amen, would save them. Praise God. And while we believe, amen, praise God, in prayer, because prayer is vital and essential. These unnamed men were not only willing to tarry, but they were willing to carry someone to the Lord. You see, at prayer, amen, we have been taught to tarry. Praise God. But could it not be said the rest of the week we need to learn how to carry? Amen? It's one thing to pray for other people. It's another thing, amen, to put the gospel shoes on your prayers. We can pray for people and pray for an open door, but we must go and we must knock that door and we must invite someone to the house of God. 
Praise the Lord. Last point, amen. Praise God. Nobody can ever stay the same after coming in contact with Jesus. Are you ready? It's my last verse, Mark 2 and 12. And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all. Do you get it? Just a few moments before, he came with his back on the bed. And now, after meeting Jesus, he leaves with the bed on his back. Let's put our hands together. Let's thank the Lord. Praise God. It's a picture of the church. It's what we're supposed to be doing, praise God. Four unnamed men. Put your name there. Are you willing to help? Are you willing to carry? Are you willing to do your part, praise God? Because one couldn't have got him there. Amen. Praise the Lord. While you're knocking the door, amen, somebody's praying the prayer of faith. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. We need to do our part in the kingdom of God. People, amen, are dying lost today. People are going to a devil's hell today. And it bothers me, praise God. When I hear these reports that someone passed away and they weren't born again of water and of the spirit, amen. In my spirit, there's a check and immediately I begin to grieve. And I say, God, what was it, amen, that we didn't do to reach that person? Does it not bother you? Does it not grieve you to have people die knowing, amen, that they're not saved? I've had people say, well, you're not the judge. You can't make that call. I beg to differ, amen. The Bible tells us there's only one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father who's above all, through all, and in you all. There's only one way to be saved. There's only one plan of salvation. And if you don't obey that plan of salvation, how can you be saved? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I love you and I thank you again today. Even without musicians, Lord, this morning, God, there's a sense of your presence in this house. We ask, God, that we would get under the burden again and under the yoke. God, to realize, Lord, why you saved us and the purpose, amen, that why you have called us into the kingdom for such a time as this. God, there are people out there today that, that are unsaved. There's people that are standing, Lord Jesus, Lord, in the highways and the byways. And God, we must again, Lord, witness to them and bring them to you. God, help us, Lord, amen, to do our part. Help us, Lord, to be involved in the kingdom work. God, this is a principle of the kingdom. Jesus, Lord, when you come, amen, praise God. You're not going to look, amen, praise the Lord, amen, on, 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 the, on, the, on the fruit of our heart, but on the fruit of our hands. Amen, what we've done for the kingdom of God. I pray, God, that you would help us, Lord, and give us a sense, Lord Jesus, Lord, amen, of our responsibilities. Somebody said amen. Praise God. A picture of the church. A picture of the church. Amen. Amen. Who were those men? Would it be you? Would it be me? Will you invite someone to the kingdom? Invite someone to the house of God? Will you bring someone, amen, praise God? Hell, even if you got to buy them a ham hamburger. Hello? I meet people, amen, and I'll buy them a hamburger and, and fries and a soda pop, amen, and, and invite them to church. Praise God. And I had a guy one time said, man, he said, you're buying saints. And I said, well, I said, if that's what it takes, I said, to get them to come with me to the house of God. I said, man, I'll buy them another burger. I'll buy everybody a burger just for them to walk through that door and hear the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. You are so blessed today to have a church, amen, praise God, that's not compromising the Word of God. I'm going to tell you, amen, you can walk out that door and never come back, amen, praise God, and it will grieve my heart, amen, but you've come too late, amen, to pull me away from God. I love this word. I love this truth. Amen. I know what I used to be like. Amen. For God saved my soul. If you knew my past, amen, praise God. And I'm glad that you don't. Amen. I'm glad that God don't even know my past. He's already wiped it off the map. The Bible says, as far as it is from east to west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. If I ever bring up my past before the Lord, God just simply says, I don't even know what you're talking about.
we say amen? But Satan, he'll always dig in your past. Are you ready? We're closing. This is it. You take this one in for full measure. If Satan ever comes, he been reminding you of your past. Always remind him of his future. It has a great effect. Put your hands together. Let's clap unto the Lord. Thank God for the truth today. Let's win someone for God. Let's reach someone before it's too late. Somebody, even praise God, is out there right now. They're weeping and crying. Maybe, amen, they're going through a situation, amen, perhaps, amen, an event, amen, at home, maybe on the job, perhaps, amen, a sickness, an illness, amen, praise God. And right now, amen, they're asking God, send someone my way. Amen. I promise you, God has revival for this church. God has the people in this town he wants to save. Amen. Praise God. Let's clap our hands one last time. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, and I praise you today. God, this is what we need. It's a picture of the church. Praise God. Hey, there's no Bible study tonight. Amen. We'll pick up amen, again at the beginning of the new year. But if you ain't doing nothing this afternoon, 3 o'clock, we're going to be out here working on this building. Praise God. Amen. So if you want to come out and help, amen, hey, I'll even buy you a hamburger. You're dismissed in the love of Jesus. Praise God. Amen.